I'm very deli delighted to introduce Master Fredwick <coughs> Sinhead. Master Sinhead is and has been interested in the prehistoric era and planetology since the outstanding age of nine months. He will be presenting to us the risk of radioactive waste and their devastating effects on species. I must add that he has just turned eight years of age and has already written his own book on dinosaurs. I can only imagine this talk to be very innovative and enlightening one, and I hope uh, you all enjoy it. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Master Perfect Sinhead. Thank you very much. Just, okay, it's already done. Just wait. I'll just do it. Thank you. My name is Pritvik Sinadisi and I'm going to talk to you about the impact of radioactive waste on marine and land species. But let me first tell you that this is my third book, but it still needs some research and it's incomplete, but I'll try to satisfy the audience's queries. The impact of radioactive waste on marine and land species. All lives on Earth and in the ocean live on an exposure to natural levels of ionizing radiation, which is high-frequency radiation with enough energy to change the DNA of organisms. Most of genetic damage heals, but the addition to human radiation can make it harder for the body to repair broken genes. Radioactive waste, the source of which is mostly human weight, like nuclear power plants, nuclear testing, wrong disposal of nuclear or radioactive medicines by hospitals, etc., can cause serious impact on marine and land species. Research on prehistoric mass extinctions and man-made nuclear disasters have proved that uncontrolled radioactivity and nuclear or radioactive waste can hurt marine and land species in several ways, by killing them outright or critically altering the genetics of these species thereby creating bizarre mutations in their offspring, or worse, passing radioactive material up the food chain. So where are we heading? Before I delve into the dangerous, bizarre impacts of radioactive and nuclear waste on marine and land species, <clears throat> let me first introduce you to what are the benefits of ionizing radiation and nuclear technology. Nuclear technology and ionizing radiation. <coughs> ionizing radiation is generated through nuclear reactions, either artificial or natural, by very high temperature. For example, the coronal mass ejection, or corona of the sun, or via production of high energy particles in particle accelerators, or due to acceleration of charged particles by the electromagnetic fields produced by the natural processes from lightning to supernova explosions. <coughs> Ionizing radiation includes cosmic rays, alpha, beta, and gamma rays, x-rays, etc. Ionizing radiation has practical use in medicine, both diagnosis and radiation treatment, and in research. In fact, nuclear technology is used for generating heat, power, and electricity in industrial applications, oil and gas explorations, road construction, smoke detectors, and in food processing and agriculture industry to destroy microorganisms. 
organisms like bacteria, viruses, or insects that might be that might be present in the food. However, if used improperly, man-made radiation presents a health hazard and can damage living tissues, thereby resulting in deformity, mutation, radiation sickness, cancer, and even death. Radioactive nuclear waste. Radioactive wastes are wastes that contain radioactive material. They are the byproducts of nuclear power generation, research, and medicine. Radioactive waste is hazardous to most forms of life and the environment, and is regulated by government agencies in order to protect to protect human health and the environment. The causes of radioactive pollution include production of nuclear weapons, mining of radioactive ore, uranium phosphate, coal ash, nuclear power plants, and medicine waste from hospitals that use radi that use radioisotopes for diagnosis and treatment. Safe disposal of radioactive waste is a vital component of the overall management of the hospital waste. The effects of radioactive pollution or exposure to, to nuclear radiation were first reported in the early 20th century when people working in uranium mines suffered from skin burn and cancer. Radioactive particles form ions. When it reacts with biological molecules, these ions then form free radicals which slowly and steadily start destroying proteins, membranes, and nucleic acids. A longer exposure to radioactive radiation can damage the DNA cells that result in cancer, genetic defeats, and even death. DNA, the brain of the cell. Living organisms are all made up of cells, and DNA is considered to be the brain of the cell. DNA is the infrastructure that constructs and operates the cell. It connects to and throughout all parts of the bodies, and serves as the main communication network fully capable of obtaining new information with its own intelligence. In scientific terms, it's a nucleic acid containing the genetic instructions used in the development and functioning of all living organisms. The DNA segments carrying this genetic information are called genes. Within cells, DNA is organized into long structures called chromosomes. These chromosomes, in the process of DNA replication, they're duplicated in the process of the DNA replication, providing each cell its own complete set of chromosomes. Natural genetic damage heals. DNA damage is extremely common. Some studies suggest that the DNA in a single human cell gets damaged over 10,000 times every day. When the DNA is damaged, living beings subject themselves to numerous health problems. The cells become incapable of producing what the body needs, and the body becomes challenged in regrowing healthy cells. Fortunately, DNA has the ability to repair itself, if the damage is naturally caused. However, nuclear radiation can induce irreparable DNA damage, leading to premature aging, bizarre mutations, and cancer. Worse, the effects of radiation are passed on to the offspring. What causes DNA mutations? DNA can be damaged by many sorts of mutagens, including oxidizing agents, alkylating agents, high-energy electromagnetic nuclear radiation, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and certain chemicals, which can alter the nucleotide bases. When the DNA strands are 
simple words, the effect of radiation may not be to kill the cell, but to alter its DNA code in a way that leaves the cell alive, but with an error in the DNA blueprint. War, nuclear weapon, and testing. Albert Einstein said, if there's another life, I would like to be a plumber. I don't want to be a physicist. This is the side, this is the saddest side effects of a nuclear explosion or atomic bomb blast. A nuclear weapon is an explosive device that that derives its destructive force from nuclear reactions. Two nuclear weapons have been used in warfare, both by the U.S. near the end of World War II. On August 6, 1945, a uranium fission bomb, codenamed Little Boy, was detonated over the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, on August 9th, a plutonium fission bomb, codenamed Fat Man, was exploded over Nagasaki, Japan. These bombings resulted in the deaths of approximately 200,000 people. Since the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, nuclear weapons have been detonated on over 2,000 occasions for testing purposes. Energy from a nuclear explosive is released in many forms of penetrating radiation, which interacts with the surrounding air, rock, water, and soil. Impact of nuclear tests and wars. Nuclear weapons pose the single biggest threat to Earth's environment, including land and marine species. Scientists have warned that even a small scale war would devastate the world's climate and ecosystems, causing, causing damage that would last for more than a decade. According to Richard Turco, professor of atmospheric science, sciences and director of the UCLA Institute, of the environment, detonating between 50 and 100 bombs, just 0.03% of the world's arsenal would throw enough soot into the atmosphere to create climatic anomalies unprecedented in human history. Tens of millions of people and animals would die. Global temperatures would crash, and most of the world would unable to grow crops for more than five years. In addition, the ozone layer, which protects the surface of the Earth from the harmful ultraviolet radiation, would be depleted by 40% over inhabited areas and up to 70% of the pools. Marine life would be affected. There would be a physical damage to the reefs, leading to fish poisoning due to changes in the reef ecology. Nuclear testing in the seas would also trigger landslides, tsunamis, and earthquakes. So it's high time we stop nuclear testing on land and, and in oceans. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Within the first two to four months of the bombings, an acute radiation effects killed 90,000 to 166,000 people in Hiroshima and 60,000 to 80,000 in Nagasaki. With roughly half the deaths in each city occurring on the first day. Around 60% died from flash or flame burns, 30% died from falling concrete and rocks, and 10% died from other causes. During the following months, large numbers died from the effect of burns, radiation sickness, injuries, and illness. Immediately following the drop of the of the atomic bomb in Hiroshima 1945, fire had engulfed an area of at least 900 feet. Approximately half an hour after the atomic bomb was dropped, dirt, soot, dust, and debris started falling, all of which was highly radioactive. The long-term effects of nuclear winter were disastrous. Radioactive fallout increased genetic mutations, leading to cancers, tumors, and cysts. Most of the younger generation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were born with abnormalities, such as prenatal blindness or deafness, stunted brain growth, deformed bone structure, and heart and lung problems. Worse, the nuclear weapons did not only damage human beings, but also destroyed the environment, the plants, and animals. Surface water froze, causing animals to die. Many species became 
became extinct, really reduced sunlight caused plants to die, then animals. Months later, light and heat returned, but the ozone depletion led to greenhouse effect, and the UV exposure caused animals to go blind. Pests took over. Insects and opportunistic life forms. <laughs> Animal studies detected genetic defects. Mutations occurred in offspring several generations later. Now I'm going to talk to you about the worst nuclear disasters. And, up, and the first one is Fukushima Dachi, March 11, 2011. An 8.9 magnitude earthquake and tsunami overwhelmed the cooling systems, prompting catastrophic meltdowns of an aging reactor along Japan's northern east coast. The accident triggered explosions at several reactors, forcing a widespread evacuation in the area. Frank, Frank N., one Hippoly U.S. scientist, said one might expect around 1,000 extra cancer deaths related to the accident. And next, it's the Tokaimura accident, September 13, 1999. And after that, it's the Top 7 explosion, April 6, 1993. <clears throat> after that, it's, it's the Goianya accident, September 13, 1987. And after that, the Chernobyl, Ukraine, April 26, 1986. The Chernobyl disaster is the worst nuclear power plant disaster in history. On April 26, 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl plant exploded. More explosions ensued, and the fires that resulted sent radioactive fallout into the atmosphere. 400 times more fallout was released than had been by the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. 56 direct deaths, 47 accident workers, and 9 children with thyroid cancer. And it's estimated that there were 4,000 extra cancer deaths among the 6.6 .6 million most highly exposed people. After that is the K431 Chasma Bay, August 10, 1985. Then is the Three Mile Island, March 28, 1979. The partial meltdown of the Three Mile Island Unit 2 power plant was the most serious accident in the history of U.S. nuclear power plant operation, despite no deaths or injuries. However, however, neighborhood service showed very substantial plagues of cancer, leukemia, birth defects, breathing problems, hair loss, rash, rashes, lesions, and much more. After that, it's the UK. It's the Yucca Flat, December 18, 1970. Then the Mike Nuclear Power Plant, Kishtam Soviet Union, now Russia. 29 September, 1957. Then it's the Sewell accident, January 21, 1968. A cabin fire aboard a B-52 force the crew of the American bomber to abandon the aircraft before they could carry out an emergency landing. The bomber then crashed into the sea ice near Thule Air Base, Greenland, causing nuclear payload to, re to rupture, which resulted in a widespread radioactive contamination. <coughs> then the Palomar's incident, January 17, 1966. After that, the wind scale fire. October 10, 1957. Then is the bizarre mutations. Impact of radioactive and nuclear disasters on land and marine species. Radiation the leak from the Fukushima nuclear power plant caused genetic mutations in pale grass. And as you can see, also mutant butterflies, including dented eyes, malformed legs and antennae, and stunted wings. Researchers found radical physical changes in the successive generations of this butterfly. Caused by radiation exposure, the butterflies were degre degrading both physically and genetically, with the share of those showing abnormalities increasing from 12% in the first generation to 18% in the second, and 34 in the third. But butterflies as a group are important bioindicators for the effects of environmental stressors, like radioactive contaminants. The findings suggest that radioactive contaminants are caused
Britain's eastern coast have shown elevated levels of radioactive isotopes. And once in seawater, radiation can hurt marine animals in several ways. By killing them outright or critically altering the genetics of these animals, creating bizarre mutations or passing radioactive material up the food chain. abnormalities 20 years after the infamous catastrophe at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine, scientists in 2007 discovered that barn swallows living near Chernobyl suffered from many bird defects like deformed beaks, toes, feathers, and unusual coloring, as you can see over there. They're also not living as long and were not breathing as successfully as their distant counterparts. The findings suggested that people living near the affected zone might still be at risk. Anders Moeller from Perry and Marie Curie University in Paris led his team to examine more than 7,700 birds. Some from Chernobyl and others from control areas including Spain, Italy and Denmark. from the explosion site. The team's results revealed that deformities were much higher in birds from the Chernobyl population. More than 13% of the Chernobyl birds had partial albinism, tufts of white feathers compared to levels of 4% in the controlled birds. Recapturing the same birds year after year showed that birds with deformity, deformities were four times less likely to survive and their breeding success was reduced by over 50 percent. <coughs> the microphone on his face. Yeah. And the findings confirmed that even the low levels of radiation around Chernobyl were enough to cause the higher than average rates of deformities, genetic birth defects in humans and other living beings in the region. If this is true, then health impact would be much worse. Millions of people living in Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia may still be at risk. With proposals to increase the use of nuclear energy, this is a matter that needs urgent attention. Picture A, as you can see, shows a normal swallow. While the other picture shows signs of albinism, white feathers, deformed beaks, deformed air sacs, and bent tail feathers. No, it's okay. It's okay. And here are some pictures of deformities. This is a creature of an environmental problem. Children at a nursery in Western Supermare, England, spotted the three headed frog hopping in the garden. Source BBC News. And right beside it is the blog famous Cyclops Kitten. Was first thought to be a joke on Manny Pollution, living only for a day and had one eye and no nose. Sourcenews.com. And right beneath it to the left is the most infamous headless chicken. Mike vowed the world by living for 18 months, which indefinitely entered it into the Guinea's world records. It could still live because most of his brainstem and ear was left on his body. Source, Mike the Headless Chicken. And then to the right, there's a genetic mutation called the Feather Duster of a Parakeet. Source, Green Apple. And beneath that, the two-month-old animal named Chamblek, which means strange, was given to a monk at a local pagoda by a farmer who feared that the six-legged cow would bring him bad fortune. Radiation is hardest on the little ones. According to radio ecologist F. Ward Wicker, it's possible that levels of radioactive contamination near the Fukushima nuclear reactors could increase and cause some harm to local marine life. If this happens, the most likely effects would be reductions in the reproductive potential of local fish. Marine organisms, eggs, and larvae are highly sensitive to radiation.
station. Since we do active atoms, can we place normal atoms in their bodies resulting, resulting in radiation exposure that could alter their DNA? Most of deformed organisms don't survive. But some can pass abnormalities on to the next generation. Either way, the radiation exposure could hurt the population's ability to survive long term. The most susceptible creatures would be soft-bodied invertebrates, such as jellyfish, sea anemones, and marine worms, which can take up which can take up the radiation more quickly than shell creatures. Though, according to Wicker, fish may be most at risk. In addition to its threat to reproduction, pockets of radioactive material can burn fish passing through, hitting them like a stream of searing water. No, no, it's okay. Okay, well. okay, go on, go ahead, go ahead. You want water? You want water? <laughs> Hussein, take it back. Radiation can travel up the food chain. The worst effect of radioactive and nuclear waste is when animals eat irradiated plants and small radioactive animals. It is then that the radiation moves up the food chain. In particular, plants such as kelp can quickly absorb iodine. According to Texas Tech University, ecotoxicologist Ron Kendall, the devastation of towns in northeast Japan near the Fukushima nuclear reactors especially due to the earthquake and tsunami, also release toxic metals such as lead into the soil and water. Metals can combine with radiation to suppress the immune systems in vertebrates, making them more vulnerable to diseases. In fact, if radioactive and other toxic wastes and chemicals infect an area and sink into the soil, they contaminate the plants in the area, which causes contamination of the animals that eat the grass and plants, once the animal is contaminated, the, chemi the chemicals remain in the animal's body and anyone who eats the animal or anything produced by the animal is then contaminated as well. For example, if a cow raised on grass that has been exposed to nuclear chemicals, the chemicals will be also presented present in the cow's milk. And these, semical, and these same chemicals will be passed on to the individual drinking the milk. Prehistoric mass extinctions prove how harmful effects of uncontrolled radiation. Prehistoric mass extinction, like the Ordovician extinction, occurred because of a gamma ray burst. It took place about 440 million years ago and wiped out about two thirds of all species, including the dominant trilobites. The intense gamma ray burst was re was responsible for the one set of the ice age and depleted about 40% of the ozone layer. The loss of the protective ozone layer allowed harmful UV radiation to reach the Earth. Because UV flukes, flukes is weakened through water, marine organisms that live closest to the surface receive most UV radiation and thus were killed at higher rates than those living than those living deeper. In addition to depleted the ozone layer, the gamma ray burst initiated such sudden global cooling. Gamma rays break up nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the atmosphere and convert them into nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide, the brown gas that makes up smog, blocks out, blocks out the sunlight, thereby darkening and cooling the earth and setting up an ice age begin. Fossil evidence suggests that some species like the surface dwelling plankton died before the ice age began. Gamma ray bursts, the most powerful explosions known, came from a supernova and were observed once a day. A gamma ray burst within 10,000 light years of an Earth posed a threat to life. Such an event occurs once in a billion years. The ozone layer takes 10 years to recover from such a blast. Proper disposal of how of harmful radioactive and nuclear waste. Nuclear power isn't connected with harmful greenhouse gases. This is the main reason 
measures. But despite this, the nuclear energy sector still hasn't solved the nuclear waste issue. Nuclear waste is radioactive for around 5,000 years, and as such a present and as such presents a big environmental threat and a health hazard. Nuclear waste needs to be safely stored and isolated from the environment. Since many countries want to add more nuclear power to their energy grid, nuclear energy waste issue has become extremely important. However, very few countries across the globe have well-established programs to implement disposal of waste from nuclear power plants. Many scientists agree that deep underground storage is the safest option for storing nuclear waste. However, the world still faces many scientific challenges that need to be overcome before using this method, like waste container design, the stability of host trucks, and adequate measures to monitor and receive the waste in case of catastrophic leakages. Of course, of course this will involve huge costs, but the world needs to quickly solve the nuclear waste issue, because it wouldn't be morally right to leave it for our future generations, as the old saying goes, the ones who have started the mess should finish it. On top of so many environmental problems, the last thing this world needs right now is to worry about the safety of nuclear waste disposal. Thank you. Thank you. Master Sanhid, Master Sanhid for all the presentation. The presentation was very detailed and comprised a lot of detailed descriptions of uh, the nuclear change, either uh, naturally or man-made activated nuclear change. He gave very vast, um, massive and detailed description of the nuclear um, uh, 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 reactions and the nuclear waste uh, and the effect of it coming as from manufacturing of nuclear weapons, or usage of nuclear weapons, starting the bombs, using bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Then comes to the usage of it in the in the in the um, uh, medical side. But still, there are a lot of things happening as a result. Still now, the usage of nuclear waste in the uh, depleted, depleted uranium enriched rockets, which cause a lot of problems to many countries. The country where I came from, Iraq, for example, the deformity is increased by 80 percent, and this is mentioned by. Master Sinhead. So it is really very, and this of course brings us to a future, a very gloomy future of the nuclear reactors and its usage. And this is why in his uh, presentation that we have to think of alternative sources of energy other than new nuclear uh, reactors. So please show your appreciation to uh, Master uh, Sinhead. wants to ask you questions, please don't hesitate to ask and ensure you... Open video. your slide. Open your slide. Hello. Um, my name is Brenda. Over here. I'm with the Dubai American Academy. And I would like to know... Uh, which one of the topics that you researched do you personally feel is the one that we should concentrate on here in the Emirates? I think you should concentrate on the radioactive waste topic. Okay, thank you. Yes? Uh, uh, my name is Unmesh and uh, I found your uh, presentation really nice because uh, uh, Technically speaking, even uh, I've been doing a bit of studies on these uh, stuff. So I just uh, like to know when you uh, when you said about the uh, extension uh, uh, due to the grammar ray bursts. The ordination period. Yes, the ordination periods. Uh, so uh, like the trilobites disappeared and etc. So uh, my question is that uh, you said that the gamma ray burst uh, occurred due to a supernova. Uh, is, is there any idea of which supernova? No, just all supernovas, they explode and produce a big laser called the gamma ray. Gamma rays. Which is the speed of light. Okay, and uh, my second question would be that, uh, you, uh, you know, you're talking about uh, the explosions that happened uh, in, uh, the explosions that happened in Japan 
like in the Fukushima Daiichi plant and in Ukraine with the Chernobyls. Uh, but then uh, the effect of bombs has been uh, uh, has been uh, witnessed only in the year 1945 due to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But yeah, then, that was very dangerous actually. Okay, uh, but then uh, d does this does this effect actually continue on to later generations, like maybe today or so? Um, no, not anymore. There's not so much radiation. So this means that the nuclear, uh, so this means that the genetic damage uh, heals itself over time, maybe 50 years, say? Mm -hmm. Before it was about 60,000 millisieverts there. Now it must be a bit about um, 10 millisieverts maximum. Okay. It's reduced a lot. Thank you. Not uh, disappear completely. I think it's just diluted with time. Yeah. Yes. Hello. I want to ask that what is mutation? Can you explain me? Oh, a mutation is when radiation goes into the body, and it, and if the if the DNA structure is A B A B A B, in one part it can become T A, it can become T A, and then that will cause the DNA might will be broken then. The DNA structure will be broken and the DNA means how you look, how you talk, it controls the whole body. And if it's broken, that means you will look different. Um you will talk different, you will you won't feel like if you're the same. Thank you. Yeah, please. Good evening. I'm Rohan Kapoor. I uh, found your presentation very informative. And it was a good presentation. My question to you is, you explained to us about how radioactive waste and the effect of it goes up the food chain, right? Um, it's, yes, and it's also about radioactive waste hurting the marine and land species. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly about that. So I just want to know about, uh, specifically about the plants. Like, well, the you plant said that due, sometimes due to, you know, there's no sunlight, so then the plants die. Is yeah, there any, and is also, um, as I said, when tsunamis happen, toxic metals combined with radiation goes into the soil and contaminates plants. And contaminates plants. So if any animal eats those plants, it will be contaminated. Mm, and uh, what about the air, or like the carbon well, dioxide? The air will be contaminated, of course. And then the plant will die. Yes, because there will be radioactive fallout, there will be radiation everywhere. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes? Uh, I wanted to ask that uh, due to the gam gamma ray, uh, that uh, that you told about it, uh, how, uh, how many percent of species are being extinct? Um, about, not a hundred percent, but maybe about, say, fifty-seven percent. Okay, thank you. That, that because there are still ammonites and squid and other creatures. So not really everything was wiped out. Some survived. Any more question, please? Yeah. Yes, please. Just at the front, please. <coughs> Hi, uh, my name is Tanya, and my question to you is, you mentioned about the massive destruction that could be caused because of all the radioactive waste to land, air, and the plants and the animals too. Uh, when likely would this happen? I mean, in how many years' time or, or when? Well, any time it could happen. It could happen any time because there are lots of nuclear power plants, and one is even being built in Abu Dhabi. So whenever a nuclear reactor blows up, radiation just breaks out and then is released into the atmosphere. So apparently any time, uh, whenever it is the maximum, it can cause the most damage. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, any more questions, please? I think I'll try to finalize the last question from, the, from here. Uh, Mr. Sinhead, uh, or Master Sinhead, please, I just ask you questions. Nuclear change requires some mathematical modeling and mathematical equations. Do you have any background about the mathematics in this aspect? Or no? We just describe. Thank you. That's it. So you have to, in order to elaborate your work and to be more scientific in the future, you need to concentrate on mathematics to support your physical descriptions. Yes, please. 
No, no, I would just think that's a good idea. A good idea, thank you very much. Well, we just try to conclude our uh, uh, lectures by thanking uh, Master Sinhead, and thank you very much. Just show your appreciation again. Thank you. Can we just ask, please, um, uh, this is the, uh, what they call, Certificate of Membership awarded to ITW Middle East. Can you just take some picture? Here.